how much do you really trust your local area network? Um, now that everybody has cell phones and iPads and laptops and everything, do you really believe that your own local network is safe? For example, right here, if I connect to this room, I kill every Windows machine in this room. And I'm going to do it at DEF CON, by the way. I'm kind of, it's in the title of my talk, if they approve it, is the audience, I have audience participation as victims. Anyway, um, so, because I tried it. Um, see, I told this, I had this in a podcast, and people heard about it, and um, so some students in Massachusetts tried it at home, and they killed an Xbox and a PlayStation, they said. And so that's interesting, and I hadn't thought of that. It's not just Windows machines that are vulnerable. Random other networking devices are vulnerable. Anybody that has a sloppily written IP version 6 stack will be vulnerable. So there may be a lot of other devices that are vulnerable. Um, and so we'll continue to investigate it. Cisco and Juniper devices were vulnerable. Cisco patched their stuff, and Juniper did not. Juniper says they're going to wait for IETF to do something. Anyway, um, there are ways to defend yourself against this thing, but rather than go into that too much, let me just show it to you live. Let's see how my demo works here. Now, I've got this all running in virtual machines, but I don't trust virtual machines. They have hosed me enough. I've given many talks that failed because virtual machines refused to connect properly, so I brought along a bunch of real machines, which are kind of fun too. All right, so let's start with the router advertisement attack. That's probably the simplest one. First, let's see what I have for an IP address on this machine here. This is, uh, uh, John, that, you don't need to worry about this screen here right away. I'm just that one there. This here is a Windows 7 virtual machine. And theoretically, it is, all right, it's going to my cell phone, by the way, not to the network that you are all using for what I will become obvious reasons. Uh, this is the cheap way to make an isolated network. So this machine is 192.168.11, something or other. And it has only two IP version 6 addresses. It has one FE80 address, which every interface makes up as soon as it comes up in IP version 6. And it has one I put on myself long ago, 2 colon colon 2, when I was doing other projects. So I'm going to send some router advertisements here. I'm going to send just a few. I wrote a tool called Slow Flood. And I'm just going to send one packet per second send about three of them. And then if you look here, you'll see it has made three or four temporary addresses and three or four permanent addresses, which is perfectly fine. And so that's the result of sending router advertisements to this machine. Now, if you take a look at some other machines, such as, for example, the Macintosh host here, um, it's also joining this network. And if you take a look at this Ubuntu Linux machine, um, this one here, I ran an IP config before I started the talk on IF config here, so you can see it has no IP version 6 addresses right now, except FE80. But if I run it again, it's now added three IP version 6 addresses. Um, all right, those, that's the result of a slow flood. Um, all right, I'm going to run the fast flood, but I'm not going to do it till later, because when I run the fast flood, it's going to murder most of my machines. So it has to be pretty much at the end of my talk. Um, in fact, if you leave this thing go for more than about 30 seconds, it will kill VMware, and it will kill the Mac OS X underneath VMware, which is pretty, pretty irritating. But so uh, I won't want to do that until a little bit later. But let me do one of the other attacks. The slow Loris attack is good, clean fun here. If I do this machine, I F config, because this is Linux. I'm 192.168.11.234, and I'm running a server on that um, address. I guess I can show you that here. Let's just bring up Chrome in my Windows 7 and go to that address, 192.168.11.234. And theoretically, yeah, we're going to see if VMware hoses. Oh, good. There, okay, this is just a default um, Apache server. So there's nothing very interesting about that page, but it is running a server, and the server is up. Now, this is the OWASP tool. Um, when I talked about this at DEF CON last year, we had a Linux-based version written by Robert Hansen, our snake. And since then, OWASP has gotten in the act, and they have written this tool that tells slow headers and slow posts, which is very nice. A nice attack tool to learn about Layer 7 DOS and, and practice getting your defenses working. So um, something I learned at a Linux users group, which is extremely useful, is about this thing called server status. This will show you what's going on in your Apache server, which is pretty nice 
So it's showing me right now, I've only got one connection, which is this connection, me viewing the service. And there are a total of 150 connections it can make. So when I start this attack, it's going to send a bunch of incomplete requests up here, and there they are filling this thing up with ours. Those are requests being processed. And when they all fill up to 150, which is right now, nobody's going to be able to see any pages on this server anymore. Because this is just like calling a phone bank and putting all the lines on hold. Nobody can get in. It's not using up bandwidth. It's not using up CPU. It's just a one or two packets per second is all you need. And this server is dead. One cool thing is when you stop the attack, it recovers quickly. Now, normally, only one or two of them recover, and they recover slowly. I think I adjusted the, the timing on this server to make it a little bit faster in one of the many projects I've done on these virtual machines. But that's the slow loris attack in all of its glory. Um, so I think the thing I want to do now, let me see what time it is. Yeah, I'm only halfway through, but um, let's see. Do I have any questions about anything out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I thought of was that uh, malicious uh, JavaScript applet you could yes. do using set or Metasploit. Um, yes. Now, well, I you'd have to do. You'd have to be local, though. Huh? You'd have to be on the local land, though. Well, that's fine. You just get the victim to go to a website. Yes. The website goes yes. The applet, and then, then you can sell. Yes. See, that's what I'm thinking. That I have not done yet. Or but if you could make it web-based, then all you need is any one person at your company to click on that link or view that website, and they kill every machine in the network. Yep. And as you'll see, they're dead. I know. That's why it scares me, and I don't think Microsoft is correct to ignore this and not patch it. But yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. It's not any scary than uh, ARP poisoning on the local network. And if you can actually trigger router advertisement uh, going to a website, that means that you have the same level of access you need to do ARP poisoning. And this is going to work, for, work on IPv4 and actually has been working for the last 20 years. Well, yeah, ARP poisoning would certainly work. Yeah, and ARP poisoning enables you to redirect traffic, but it doesn't cause all the machines to crash. I mean, our poisoning stops, is interrupts a network connection for as long or as you continue hijacks. poisoning. Or hijacks. Yeah, or, or hijacks, or put you in the middle. And that's certainly true, and there are many ways to do that with IP version 6. But the thing about this is every Windows machine in your network dies and has to be restarted cold. That's why that troubles me. Well, you're certainly correct. And there are a whole bunch of, if you have access to the local network, you can redirect traffic a lot of ways. And I don't know any way to stop that. But this is more than just traffic redirection. It really means you have to restart all your servers. That means your SQL server and everything else. It seems to me like it's worse, but it's different anyway. Any, any other questions? These are, these are good questions. Well, let me, um, like I say, the last one I'm going to do at full speed and kill some machines dead, and there's some interesting things to see there. But let me make sure I've shown you the slides before I murder the machine that's displaying them. Um, all right, so anyway, to protect yourself against this, there are a lot of ways. Um, you can just turn off IP version 6 if you're not using it, which almost nobody is. If you use Windows XP and you haven't in, turned on IP version 6, it's not there. And of course, then this won't affect you at all. Um, of course, that's not very good because a lot of people do want to use IP version 6 as you're moving forward. And also, if you're using Windows 7 or Windows Vista, then IP version 6 gives you fun features. In Windows 7, it gives you direct access and home groups. And you probably would like to use those. Um, so I don't recommend that, of course. Uh, but that is one solution. If you don't have IP version 6 running, then this attack won't hurt you any. You can turn off router discovery with a simple command line. That will mean you no longer listen to router advertisements and auto configure. And that's what I think people should do on their servers. You probably do not want your servers reconfiguring to automatically join networks for the same reason you normally don't let servers use DHCP. You put static addresses on them, and you probably want to put static IP version 6 addresses on them, so you might as well turn off router discovery. But your clients probably do want to use auto discovery. That's the point. Clients are portable machines people have carried in. So for those, I think you might want to block rogue router advertisements with a firewall. The Windows firewall can do it. You just have to turn it on. This is not a very strong defense, however, because um, it's using the source IP version 6 address to tell the authorized router advertiser from the unauthorized ones. And an intelligent target, intelligent attacker could sniff the network and find out that address and spoof packets from that address. So it would be easy to 
circumvent that, but it's probably good enough to protect client machines, which aren't the end of the world if they go down anyway. Um, and of course, um, Cisco has their proprietary solution, RA Guard, and presumably Juniper will get on board one of these days, and other people will have um, RA Guard on the switches, so you can choose one physical port to be the only port that's allowed to add RAs to the network. The problem there is um, wireless, but you probably just don't want to accept any of these over wireless networks anyway. So there is a feature called RA Guard on the newest generation of switches. Um, if you have the best equipment, but small businesses and people with old equipment are not going to have that. Um, and there is actually a way around that, theoretically. The very latest version of the attack tool I'm using here, which is THC IP version 6, I'm um, from Van Housen, um, has a fragmentation header just to get around RA Guard. Because RA Guard is what the big enterprises are planning to save themselves with. Um, but the one thing about IP version 6 is instead of having an optional field in the header, which is not always used, they have a cascading series of headers. So your first IP version 6 header has a next header field, which tells it what's going to be the next header. And you can have as many of these chained as you want. It is part of the specification. So packets actually have a different number of headers. If you have a more complicated packet, it turns on more headers until it has put all the information it needs in there. So if you turn on a fragmentation header, you may remember that earlier packet. Let me go back to that earlier Wireshark capture there. Here's what a normal RA packet looks like. You've got um, uh, the header is here, type 134, router advertisement, and then you've got checksum and all that stuff. And then you've got ICMP version 6, which is what router advertisements are, including a prefix. But if you want to get past RA guard, you just add a bunch of unnecessary fragmentation headers here, telling it fragmentation header, next header, fragmentation header, next header, and down here is the ICMP version 6. So the packet looks different. Now, I do not have access to a switch with RA guard to test this, but Van Housen released this apparently in the belief that this will circumvent RA guard, and if it does, RA guard is pretty lame because that's just obeying the RFC, and this could happen to a packet if it was too large on the way in, as it would be fragmented and uh, at the source. Anyway, so, um, but that is another possibility, and that is one of the many headaches of IP version 6. Um, anyway, so